Imagine if there was a player in the league who was the best defender in the NBA, a top 10 playmaking big man of all time, and a 39% three-point shooter. Where would he rank? Well, let me introduce you to 2016 Draymond Green, one of the most underrated peaks in NBA history. In this video, we'll dive into his game and break down what made him so great, along with evaluating just how good he was. It's no secret that Draymond Green impacted the game most on the defensive end, able to effectively anchor elite defenses despite lacking size at the power forward position. One of the reasons Draymond never needed size to be successful was his defensive mind, being one of the smartest defenders the game had ever seen. His processing speed was second to none, able to quickly dissect offensive plays and get in perfect position to prevent potential scoring threats, and his reaction time was just as great, allowing him to make quick rotations to blow up plays. On this one, he's staying home to Kevin Garnett, but the roll man opens up and in just one motion, he slides into perfect position for a vertical contest. Here he sees Curry get beat off the dribble and quickly slides into a position where he can target the ball without fouling. Draymond's ability to target the ball with his 7-1 wingspan along with his timing made him one of the best rim protectors on the planet. The value of a rim protector with the IQ of Draymond is exceptional, covering almost every mistake his teammates made on that end of the floor. Instead of going to the vertical contest on driving threats, he would jump back slightly while using his length to attack the ball, forcing players to adjust their shots. On this play, he's in a full backpedal the entire time Wall is attacking, and instead of going straight up, he jumps backwards, making Wall lose balance while simultaneously swatting the ball away. Draymond's quickness and foot speed allowed him to get into position for these contests, covering as much ground defensively as almost anyone in league history and making him one of the best weak side defenders ever. Here he commits to the roll man, but quickly realizes the backdoor threat and recovers just in time for the block. Draymond was no stranger to guarding multiple players at once. His anticipation, awareness, and mobility allowed him to blow up power plays on a consistent basis. This was most notable in transition, where Draymond built a pretty strong case as the best transition defender in NBA history. On this one, he commits to the ball handler, but leaves himself just enough time to spin back around for the block. Notice the backwards jump being utilized yet again. On this play, he uses the exact same strategy to force the pass, but instead of contesting the layup, he just swipes at the ball. More of the same here, this time in a 1v4 situation, staying low on the ball so he can poke it right out of the offensive player's hands, using his quick hands to blow up the fast break. Speaking of Draymond's hands, they were pretty crazy. These quick hands also helped Draymond in passing lanes, able to disrupt passes thrown right in front of his face, again showing that insane reaction time. His anticipation for these passes was just as phenomenal. On this one, he's glued to Damian Lillard on the perimeter, but jumps right into the lane from behind for the steal, a very advanced read. Notice how much ground he covers to get into these lanes, showcasing that elite mobility. This mobility held a lot of value off the ball, both when helping around the rim or in passing lanes, but it also helped him on the ball. His ability to move his feet allowed him to match up with guards and wings on a consistent basis, and he used his quick hands to poke at the ball, preventing change of direction by the ball handler. When players did get the jump on Dre, he was able to recover as well as anyone, surprising slashers with his length and timing. This length also allowed him to contest jumpers as well as anyone, making him a nightmare in isolation. Draymond was able to guard every position from 1 through 5 effectively, and because this era wasn't as prominent with post-centric bigs taking advantage of his size, there really wasn't a single defensive situation that he was out of place or uncomfortable in, making him the ultimate defensive anchor. Despite being just 6'6", you could run him at the 5 because of his ability to protect the rim and match up with bigs, making him the perfect small ball engine. If his individual ability wasn't enough to make him a generational defender, he also elevated teammates to the highest level on that end through his all-time communication and non-stop motor. This defensive impact is shown in the numbers as well. The 2016 Warriors had the second best defense in the NBA with Dre on the floor at a 100.4 defensive rating, and they fell to dead last with him off the floor at a 112.5 defensive rating, more than a 12-point swing. Draymond Green was the king of turning defense into transition offense, where he thrived. He would push the ball at full speed down the middle of the court and make the defense pick their poison. 
react to his drive, he's either delivering a beautiful dime to a cutter in stride for a layup, or firing a fastball to a shooter in the pocket. React to any of the teammates around him, and he had no problem taking it all the way to the rack himself. On top of his ability to push it in transition, Draymond was an elite outlet passer as well, securing defensive rebounds, then hitting players down court in stride for easy two-point opportunities. Draymond wasn't only a strong offensive player in transition though. In the half court, he was a great initiator, capitalizing on the off-ball movement of Clay and Curry. He's one of the best exploitive passers in NBA history, recognizing defensive errors and hitting cutters at will. Here he sees that Wiggins is staying glued to Clay on the perimeter, so he fires a pass to Curry on the cut for the easy layup. While a lot of Draymond's assists are opportunities created by the gravity of the Splash Brothers, having a player who can read these openings and deliver the passes in the right spots works wonders for an offense. On this one, the defender hesitates to leave Curry for even a second, creating a tight gap for Dre to deliver a high leverage assist. On top of Draymond's strong on-ball initiating, he was outstanding at moving without the ball. He would often blend cuts into quick passes down low, and he loved lobbing these over the top to the big. This lob utilization was most notable in Draymond's generational short roll passing, drawing defenders off the roll and quickly flicking them up for the big to throw down. He didn't only go to the lob in these situations either, he was able to fire these cross court to shooters or deliver them to cutters as well, giving him a versatile playmaking game out of the roll. While Draymond was never an elite scorer, or even a good one, he was a solid floor spacer, shooting just under 39% from 3, and this forced teams to respect him enough that it opened up the floor for cuts to the basket, or the occasional dribble drive. He rarely pressured teams with his scoring, but was just good enough that it forced teams to react to his attacks to the basket, opening up the floor for his elite passing, and making him one of the best playmaking bigs in NBA history. The numbers show just how valuable Draymond Green's playmaking was to the Warriors. If we look at every single player on the Warriors from 2015 to 2019 who played at least 2,000 minutes without Draymond on the floor, every single last one of them drops in scoring efficiency, with the two offensive juggernauts Curry and KD seeing a pretty solid decline. People always bring up how Curry, Clay, and KD made life easier for Draymond on offense, but they don't bring up how it was quite the mutual benefit. Draymond's playmaking game made him a clear positive on offense. Combine that with his off-ball abilities, and you get one of the most scalable offensive talents in NBA history. Combine that with his all-time level defense, and you get one outstanding basketball player. Dre's impact to the Warriors situationally was nothing short of MVP level, but on any random team, I would label him as a weak MVP caliber player, one of the best ceiling raisers in NBA history, and a top 7 player in the year 2016. That's it for the 2016 Draymond Green in-depth analysis. Make sure to subscribe and turn my post notifications on if you enjoyed the video. Also make sure to follow my Twitter at KGsGo, Instagram at the Hoop Venue, and subscribe to my second YouTube channel HV to keep up with my other content. You can find those links in the description. If you want to join my Discord or become a YouTube member, those links will be in the description as well. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you agree and disagree with in this video and how good you think peak Draymond Green was. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.